Aristide from Metabolism of Cities and in this video I'd like to share with you six tips to save the world from the environmental crisis. If you're new around here, Metabolism of Cities is a platform that shares and gathers information around urban metabolism or urban resource and waste flows. So tip number one, work less, earn less, consume less. Of course, you have to think of this tip as being more of a tip towards the Western world or the, the Northern uh, world, uh, because this is where most of the environmental impacts today are originating from. You'll tell me, well, yes, there are a lot of uh, pollution in production activities, but in my sense, a lot of those production activities come from consumption activities. Um, in the de developed world. So that means that if you can, uh, and even in the developed world, uh, of course, there's a great disparity in income, but if you can and you have sufficient money, then try to reduce your hours of work and therefore reduce your income in order to consume less. Um, there is almost no way around it. More consumption equals more environmental impacts. So in order to decrease our environmental impacts, we have to decrease our consumptions. And how do we decrease our, income, uh, our consumption? It's by decreasing our you know, uh, purchasing power and therefore reducing how many hours we work. On the flip side, of course, that's a great thing because you have more free time, you can enjoy yourself and you can do other things that, not, that are not monetary based. Okay, so tip number two, favor local and renewable resources. Well, if you favor local resources, that means that your resources or the product that you will have at the very end will come from uh, closer, close by, that means less uh, travel distance by the products and shortening the supply chain. And renewable, of course, because we don't have too many resources anymore. So it means that you need to consume renewable products. Um, this can be from food, uh, so more local food, uh, organic as well, but also uh, renewable in the sense that renewable energy, uh, harvesting rainwater, etc, etc. Now this does not mean that because it's renewable we have to consume too much, but favor always more local and more um, renewable resources. Um, you also have to think that more local does not equal more environmental friendly. So eating a cow that's uh, fed and uh, and you know, uh, then killed and uh, consumed locally, that does not mean that it's better than importing, um, I don't know, uh, vegetables from the, the other side of the world. You still have to uh, think about uh, how, what is the environmental impact of your products and how much the, the travel distance is relevant to it. So local is not always uh, a proxy towards environmental uh, sustainability, but it's a good rule of thumb. Let's go to tip number three. Maximize the lifespan of your products. We talked about consuming less and then consuming more local and renewable products and resources. But in case you consume, the ideal is that you um, maximize the lifespan of your products. Because the, the more you maximize their lifespan, not only you reduce the amount of waste produced, you also reduce the amounts of new consumptions that you will need. Um, so try to maximize uh, the value of all of your products that you have in your house, from electronics, um, clothing, all of the things that you have in your house, try to maximize it as much as possible. Uh, and even if it's not in fashion anymore, uh, perhaps you can uh, somehow change them a bit or stylize them a bit, but try to manufacturing, uh, try to maintain them as much as possible. You can always do that by repairing, uh, try to reuse some uh, new components and if you really have to buy new things try to buy second-hand products because they already had a life and that means that we have already extracted material once we don't need to do it twice um, so look for thrift, thrift shops look for um, flea markets look for second-hand uh, uh, websites now there are more and more and this is one of the huge ways to reduce your environmental impact. Tip number four is not necessarily an action, but more of a tip to think about things. So tip number four is about always thinking about indirect environmental impacts. What do I mean by this? 
Well, imagine you buy uh, a camera, right? The camera that's filming me right now. Well, this camera weighs between uh, 500 grams and one kilo, let's say. You might think, well, it has some plastics, it has some metals, it probably has some circuit boards and stuff like that. Well, you know, you might say this is not very uh, polluting as materials, but if you consider all of the materials across the supply chain that were needed in order for me to actually film this video, well, you will start adding the boats that transported this from somewhere to somewhere else. You'll start adding the excavation machine that excavated a number of ores that were then refined into metals or precious metals that are within this camera, etc., etc. So you have to think along the supply chain how much materials are consumed during this entire life cycle of your product. Um, and what other, one other thing is that, for instance, um, let's say you want to reduce water consumption in your household. Well, there is an easy way. It is to take a shower instead of a bath, right? But um, if you look at um, food consumption, well, meat, in order to produce meat, you need a lot of uh, things to feed the, the cow or whatever meat you're eating. And therefore, this is what consumes a lot of water. So if you take them at a personal level, you consume much more water for eating meat than for taking uh, showers instead of baths. So it, always keep in mind the indirect effects of your consumption because you might want to shift some of your actions because of this indirect impact. Tip number five. Tip number five is Think about who you vote for and where is your money. These are your two superpowers. This is where you can get most of your impact. First of all, about the banks perhaps or about your money. Well, most of us put our money in a bank, um, but most of the banks do investments in fossil fuels, in activities that are uh, lucrative but very damaging to the planet. So one very easy way to do the best thing for your money is to find out what is your um, bank uh, investing your money in. And even if you don't want to invest it, your, <laughs> your bank does it for you. So try to figure out there are many alternatives that um, are more uh, sustainable or finance or invest sustainable projects. Um, such as Triodos, so there is now a newbie in, uh, in Belgium, etc, etc. Really find out where you want to put your money. The second thing about voting, well, I mean, to be honest, most of the things that I'm trying to speak over here could be uh, solved if we had a better uh, political will. So it means that if we had carbon taxes, if we had the real environmental price of products, um, if the, the real envir uh, the environmental impact of products was reflected to the price, then it would be very easy for the consumer to, to choose from, right? Um, you choose the, the, the product that's cheaper equals um, less environmental uh, harms. So that would be very easy, but this regulation does not exist. And this is why we need good politicians. So next time there are, you, you need to vote, just try to vote for the candidates that are the most uh, radical, that are the most, uh, well, in terms of envir environment, but also other social um, uh, challenges, and really think that we don't have much time anymore. So we cannot have a consensus anymore. We cannot have a central um, candidate. You, in my opinion, you really need, and candidates really need to be much more radical or go at least a step further in order to, to tackle this huge environmental crisis. The last tip, tip number six. And again, this is not a tip, but it's more of a thing to keep in mind is that, well, we in the developed world, um, again, developed world, are the ones that are consuming and, and therefore um, leading a lot of um, uh, production, uh, but there is the entire 
well, developing world that is trying to well to, 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 to live a normal life, to, to get it out of poverty, to, um, to get lit, uh, literated, to, to get well I mean a decent life. And whatever you consume is what is extracted from that bucket. Because we only have one planet and a finite amount of resources, whatever is taken from somewhere is not given to somewhere else. So really think about whatever we do not consume in the developed world can be consumed in the developing world. And you might think, well, okay, great, uh, but if we are not, um, if we do not develop the right infrastructure, the right um, uh, urbanization in the developing world, we're, we're doomed to fail. Because if we build again roads and things, the same mistakes we have done in the developed world, in the developing world, then we're just going to consume the same amount we're doing now per capita in all of the planet. And that's strictly impossible. Um, so really try to uh, minimize your impact as much as possible to leave place for the rest of humanity to develop. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this uh, short video. These are just six uh, tips that you can have in mind when you want to, to act for the planet. And um, please have a look at our other videos where we try to explain uh, how our world works in terms of resource use and wastes. Cheers.